So this is a smartwatch which plays TikTok videos. This is a watch that I custom built using a 32-bit microcontroller with only 320 kilobytes of RAM. Okay, cool. So you're like me and you wanna spend three months of your life building the most useless gadget in existence. How do you start? How do I get TikTok videos? It's not like we can just open up a Python terminal and type in import TikTok, but wait, we can. It turns out that there is an unofficial TikTok API for Python. Do not base a whole project off an unofficial API. <laughs> I think my claps are off. So here's the thing. I had this whole thing working and right before I was about to record this actual video, part of the TikTok API, this unofficial API stopped working. So basically what I'm trying to say is that when you build a project off an unofficial API, a lot of a lot of things can go wrong when you least want it to. So you'll see the code in the comments of how I worked around this, but um, yeah, just a word of caution. All right, back to the video. Okay, so using this API, we can grab TikTok videos. Now we need to play them on some sort of device. For this project, I decided to use the ESP32. It's a dual core 32-bit microcontroller with Wi-Fi capabilities. So you can program this microcontroller using the standard Arduino library or the ESP IDF library, or even bare bones assembly if you wanted to. So the idea is that we will send videos wirelessly to the ESP32 and play them with some sort of LCD and speaker. Let's first talk about sound. In order to play sound on an ESP32, we're gonna need three things. Uncompressed audio, an analog to digital converter, and an audio amplifier. Go to a Linux or Mac terminal and do xsd-i on any WAV file and you can see what the contents of the WAV file looks like. Now, a WAV file is pretty much a container that contains around 44 bytes of more of header information before getting to the actual raw data. The actual WAV data starts at the data chunk conveniently named data. This is the actual audio data that we wanna to send to the ESP32. All we're gonna do is import the PyDub audio library and that library will split up the WAV file into chunks um, and we'll send these chunks through a WebSocket to the ESP32. Okay, cool. So now we got a way to send audio. So the next thing is we need a DAC that can drive a speaker so we can actually hear that audio. Now the ESP32 does have a built-in DAC but it really sucks. So instead, we'll use a chip called the Max 98357A. It has a DAC and audio amplifier built right into it. So the final point is we're gonna use this half watt speaker to play some sound. It's not the most amazing sound you ever heard, but it works. Okay, nice. So we got sound. The next thing we're gonna need is some graphics and a display. So I ended up using these displays that I got from AliExpress. I simply use these just because they were what I tested with on my dev board and they also have the perfect aspect ratio for TikTok videos. So there are a bunch of different display technologies. I squared C, SBI, LVDS, RGB, MIPI, DIS. <laughs> so the display that I'm using for this project supports the parallel Intel 880 interface along with the standard serial peripheral interface known as SPI. Generally speaking, it would be faster to use the parallel interface because we can push more bits at once. However, we wouldn't need to use more IO pins. So to keep things very simple, let's just stick with using the SPI interface. And honestly, sticking with SPI is not gonna really hinder this project that much because if you look at the data sheet for this display, you'll see that the cycle write time is 16 nanoseconds. And if we do some quick math based off of this, we can see that the SPI driver can handle speeds of up to about 60 megahertz. Stay with me, I promise, I promise, we're almost done. So all theoretical, but at a resolution of 135 by 240, with each pixel ticking up 16 bits, that means we have a total of 518,400 bits to send per second. At a speed of 60 megahertz, we could attain a speed of about 115 frames per second. Now here's the issue though. This is all dealing with raw data. It's gonna be roughly 64 kilobytes of storage. You know, we only have 320 kilobytes of RAM. 
So enter in the JPEG. So with JPEG, we can compress images. <laughs> Who would have known? So we can turn that 64 kilobyte image down to eight kilobytes. But the trade-off for this is that now we have to decode that JPEG back to raw data on an ESP32. And that's gonna take time. So it's a trade-off between time and space. So in Python, we use OpenCV to grab each image from the video, compress it to a JPEG, and send it to the ESP32 through a WebSocket. So finally on an ESP32, we can grab the image, decode it from a JPEG to raw data, and send it to the display, utilizing DMA like we talked about earlier. Whew, oh my God, so much. So the audio video are working, but they're playing out of sync. So how to solve the sync issues? It's a little bit of a, I don't know, this is kind of a jank solution, but it's working. So what we're doing, I'm thinking is that we want to target 30 FPS, right? So if the audio and video, you know, are perfectly aligned, that means for each image, the audio lasts 0.33 seconds. So by that thinking, what we can do is we can package one image of 0.33 seconds of audio into like, you know, one nice little package. And we send this package to the ESP32 through our WebSockets. On the ESP32, we get that package, we decode it, and we separate the audio and video. And then we pretty much send the audio to I2S and then a video to our display at almost the same time. And this is accomplishable using FreeToss because with FreeToss, we can create everything as a task and switching between the tasks are very fast. And we can even dedicate a task to run on a dedicated core. All right, so now we got all the software working. The next step is to create a custom PCB. So I started off by going to easyeda.com and creating a simple schematic. Now, the main things we needed were a voltage regulator, an auto reset circuit, a USB to serial device, along with the ESP32, and also the Max 983578A audio amplifier chip. I really took reference designs from what we see on Adafruit, along with what we see with the tiny Pico board display, and I just kind of modified them to what I needed for my purpose. Finally, the most annoying part is doing the PCB traces. So to create a PCB, I use EasyEDA, and I used their PCB creator. So I did a standard four layer PCB with the signal on the top and bottom plane, and then BCC and ground sandwiched in between those. Now, the hardest thing was really trying to get all the components to fit into this tight space. It took me multiple times to route this until I was able to get things routed right with enough clearance um, that I can sort of hopefully be confident that everything worked. Now, if you're familiar with the ESP32 Pico, there's a big elephant in the room that we have to talk about, and that is the antenna. So man, antennas. Antenna placement, it's a big science, and there's so much that goes into it in order to make sure the antenna performs well. I did not have the time nor knowledge to do any of that. So I kind of yellowed the whole entire antenna placement, meaning I did not have any matching Pi networks. I didn't really do anything. I just literally placed it onto the board and I just pretty much followed what they said in the data sheet. So making sure it's not on a ground layer. And I also left the copper exposed underneath it. And I kept the trace from the antenna to the actual ESP32 as short as possible. Now, to my big surprise, this worked. So finally, once everything was ready, I ordered everything through JLPCB and waited about two weeks for the fully assembled PCBs to arrive. So there is one thing I did mess up in this whole entire design, or maybe one of the things I at least now realize, maybe there's more, but um, you notice that in all the videos, I have a button. Now that button actually does not work because I mapped that button to IO 17 um, through the actual PCB tracing. I didn't realize until later when I looked in the data sheet that IO 17 is, you really can't use that for anything because that's mapped internally to the internal SPI of the ESP32 Pico. So basically I have a button that just doesn't work or doesn't do anything, you know? At least it wasn't the worst thing to break, but you know, now I know in the future to read a data sheet closer. So there you have it. That's pretty much how I built this TikTok watch. So guys, if you wanna stay up to date with more projects that I do and more content I wanna post, hit that subscribe button. Also go and follow me on Instagram, an official new Instagram for this channel. 
Also, follow me on TikTok because we have a new TikTok for the channel as well. And as always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.